from yes, thatparkplace.com, where Valiant Renegade is in deedly doodly a financial partner, big time, major asset for uh, helping us keep the uh, lights running and John Trent working hard, as with so many of the other contributors there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've already heard the headline, this one yep. by me, simply because it's a Sunday, so somebody had to write it. Bob Iger might want to order more ulcer medication. The richest man in the world who had choice words for the Disney CEO at a New York Times summit was just publicly embracing the man waging a proxy war for control of the Walt Disney Company. Here's the article. Lola went loco today, but not for the typical Hollywood reasons one might expect on a red carpet. Instead, it could be that Disney CEO Bob Iger is seen red after a surely orchestrated public display of camaraderie was had between Nelson Peltz and Elon Musk. The latter is, of course, the man who famously told those companies boycotting X for advertising money that they could go fund themselves. Now, folks, these first two paragraphs cover stuff that you all probably know as viewers, again, the highest IQ on the internet, viewers of the Valiant Renegade channel. So we're going to get down into the new stuff rather than the context setting stuff. And here's what we've got. Perhaps the biggest bombshell of Elon Musk joining Nelson Peltz on the red carpet of Selena Gomez's Lola film was his hinting that he was with friends and thinking about companies to acquire. If there's anyone who has the pockets deep enough to actually help Peltz take control of Disney, it's Elon Musk. And there's little doubt in the timing of all this, considering the next earnings call for the Walt Disney Company is later this week. It's hard to imagine Bob Iger having the earnings call now without even a question about this possibility. Here, folks, is what you have been waiting for. Let's play it. Why the bomber jacket? I just, honestly, I just pulled this out of my closet. So It looks really cool, like a pilot. Thanks, so I'm a pilot. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, anybody know who that gentleman is behind him? Oh, I know. That's Nelson it, Peltz. It is. <laughs> Looking cool. So what brings you to the Lola carpet? I'm just, uh, just here with friends, you know, thinking about companies to acquire. Whoa, like Fab TV? Maybe you can acquire Fab TV. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that, didn't, sure that didn't mean anything. He's there with friends, one standing with him in that picture right there, one right behind him uh, at this movie premiere, and he coyly says, might be looking to acquire some companies you know Arms folks around each other uh can we go ahead and i tell you what i'll pull this up on mine i want to remind folks of this very quickly i joked about this weeks ago i said look elon musk you know it's he's out there he's made direct comments on disney and uh <laughs> you know we've seen his remarks as pro just brought up let me uh let me pop this in real quick pro if you don't mind let me do this well i can show absolutely my and, while, and while you're doing that we've got this when the aristocats uh had this new you know disclaimer that disney puts on their old content elon musk tweeted out this was just five days ago or so current disney management is destroying the company time for change you know right. i'm starting to think there's a connection here go ahead Valiant, with yours that was january 30th and let's remind people of this one restore the magic.com Okay, this is the Nelson Pelt site that was put out last year, taken down after they reached an agreement, brought back up recently as soon as the new proxy fight was officially announced. And if we scroll down here, this is the, one of the first things I noticed when we cut a video on this a couple of weeks ago. Let's see if it's still there. Uh, I bet it is. Oh, they might have moved it. They might have moved it. Um, there was one of the quotes here was from Elon Musk and it was on there it was a it was a quote about Disney made to apparently restore the magic that they had licensed to use they must have moved it off that page but it was and was one of these right here but it doesn't look like it's there anymore um, but he had a comment there about Disney having to improve themselves and I took notice of that I'm like I find it interesting that we've got Nelson Peltz remarking uh or excuse me Elon Musk remarking that um on the Pelts Restore the Magic page. I said, I don't think that's much of an accident. I said, it's going to be interesting to see what Elon Musk actually may do between now and the uh, and the annual stockholders meeting. That's going to be sometime in early April. Now, we've got the earnings call. The earnings call is coming up Wednesday, this Wednesday, so just a few days from now, February 7th in the afternoon. I believe the call will begin at 4.30 Eastern. It's pretty typical for Disney. We usually start about 15 minutes to 30 minutes before that with those afternoon calls, just depending on how fast I can get home and how early I can break away that day. Um, so that, that's always something to be listening for. So they're not taking the votes, is my point. This The whole stockholder, the board meeting, that's not happening. The board election's not happening on this earnings call. We're going to get some interesting news on this earnings call for sure. Y'all were doing a good preview 
kind of breaking that down earlier while I was in the car. Um, but the big show is going to be in April. And what's going to happen between this earnings call on Wednesday coming up and whatever's going to happen with the board vote, uh, you know, electing members to the board in April, it's going to be interesting to see what Elon Musk does between Wednesday this week and two months later, April, usually around the first week or two of April. Well, let me ask um, you this, Valiant, because uh, we don't want to we, we don't want to discount how big this Wednesday is going to be. Mm -hmm. No, what no, it's, it's, it's going to set now? the stage. What are the chances now that there's a question from the institutional investors at the end of the call that asks Bob Iger directly about this Elon Musk quote? that he's looking to acquire companies. What's the chance this now has to be answered? If somebody actually throws that out, um, and I say if, and, and, and understand what I mean by that is, remember, these are all the investment bankers, the mutual fund companies, the JP Morgan banks, those kind of guys. That's who's going to be on uh, the earnings call. So as far as the, the Q&A. Uh, so let me turn this down. I apologize that the microphone is kind of up and good or up and down. It's been hard to adjust this because I'm on a mobile setup, obviously. But um, the issue is with that, there may be Alexia Quadrani, who I believe is still there. She's still the investment uh, uh, chief investment officer there that, that basically handles all the relationship with the stockholders and especially the institutionals. Um, she might tell the people calling in before they call in, please steer clear of certain questions like that. Maybe there's things they don't want to answer. These are things that can happen, uh, you know, during these things and there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that the people calling in representing the different banks and the investment firms necessarily have to follow it. So you would think it could happen, but I also think that Disney might try to request that they not. I think Disney, there's going to be questions. Could that be a Streisand effect kind of thing, though? Do you think they might just want to avoid bringing it up altogether? It could be. That's the problem. It's very hard. They're going to get questions about the proxy stuff. And I think they're, they're you know, Bob Iger is already being uh, drilled and schooled right now, uh, like a debate, like a politician going to a debate. He's, he's, he's just probably... He's going to be handed some notes. He's going to be rehearsed. Obviously, I'm not talking about the scripted portion of the call. That's always rehearsed or scripted. I'm talking about the Q&A. And, a. and I'm, he's probably being rehearsed right now of what, what to say and what not to say uh, if and when somebody asks a question about the proxy fight. That's typically how that works. So even though it's a QA, and a most of what Iger is going to hand back is going to be a relatively canned answer that he's going to try to tailor to the specific question. I think there's going to be some fun questions about the whole Disney lawsuit uh, that just got dismissed in federal court. And yes, Disney's going to say, well, it's not over yet. We're going to appeal, blah, blah, blah. I mean, uh, it's got to come up. It's just yeah. got to come up. There's too much going on right now. Um, and look, here's the thing. The... We have Monday, we have Tuesday, and then we have all day Wednesday before their earnings call. If Elon Musk really, really wants to be a jerk, and I hope to God, I think he, he does. To be a jerk, <laughs> yeah, I would drop the hammer like an hour before the earnings call. You, you, how much, how, Valiant? How much do you think Elon Musk really wants to be at the premiere of a Selena Gomez movie? Uh, probably not that much. Exactly. Uh, you, yeah. yeah. Jerk mode engaged, man. All right. So let me ask you this. How much does Elon Musk or anybody else have to throw in to get to the point where Disney really can't keep Pelts, Rasulo, and maybe more off the board? Like how much money are we talking has got to be thrown at this company to get control of it? <sighs> I look, I, Hmm. I don't think it's about necessarily number of shares at this. It's about 
the gravity of, of who's doing this. You've got Pelts, you've got Perlmutter. You start throwing Elon Musk in there. He can make a lot more noise than Pelts or Perlmutter can, quite obviously. Richest man in the world. He's got he, a net worth of $190 billion. Even, even if he threw various trusts and different corporate entities or, or trust entities that he has control over, uh, were to decide to pick up another, add, throw in another billion dollars worth or something. Um, he can be a very, very powerful voice to rally other non-institutional coalition Disney shareholders into the fray. People that otherwise may never have paid attention. Elon Musk can get their attention. Seriously, think about this. And I, I can tell you right now what the answer is. But think about, you know, of all the small individual investors out there might have a hundred shares of Disney or 50 shares of Disney, or maybe a few hundred shares of Disney. Most of the time, those types of investors, they tend to get their ballots in the mail or they get in, you know, they get something in the mail to say, go to this website, register online. Here's your registration number based on, and you have 50 shares to vote or a hundred shares to vote or whatever. So you get, you get votes so if you have 100 shares, you get 100 votes, right? Most of those people get these things, and those little postcards, like everything else that comes, it's like junk mail. It just goes in the trash. They don't even vote, right? So the power is really in the institutionals, um, and that's why they tend to rally around them because the individual stockholder, and it's not just Disney. It's I mean, it's everybody. I mean, unless you have a significant portion and pay attention, most people just don't engage. Um, Elon Musk could get a lot of these people to pay attention and engage. That's what's going to be well, interesting if he really jumps in. Well, I was going to say, go back to when we first heard the news or when we he did the whole, you know, go fund yourself bit on stage. Mm -hmm. Go back and listen to all our shows at that time. That's the one thing we talked about is Elon Musk was the one person, the one individual who could jump into this and really change. Yep things or really shake things up, especially for Bob. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if I was Bob, I would be worried because yep. this is the one thing, this is like nightmare scenario for you. If you're in this position right now. Yeah. You can't, you're, you're not going to, you're just not going to beat Elon Musk in the, the war of, of, of PR. Now the news media may back a Bob Iger, <laughs> but uh, and, and I, you know, I hate to make the comparison, but it's a real comparison. I mean, it's the Trump effect. The media will hate you, but mm -hmm. middle America, general population, you're going to be much more beloved than the news media makes out to be. I think Elon Musk is very similar in that nature. Well, I think that's some clutch. That's uh, another angle to what you're talking about, that it's not. It's been about the number and the percentage of shares up to now. If Elon Musk throws his name in the mix, then it, just like you said, Valley, and I agree with you completely, it's not about does Team Pelts get to 10%, 20%, 15%, 5%. Two things happen. One is that, remember that Elon pulled off this Twitter deal, which many said that it was just never going to happen. He wasn't going to get the financing. It was going to happen, mm -hmm. and he did. So this is a galvanizing figure that proved that he's able to do big deals and get them done pretty quickly, you know, despite what would be deemed as insurmountable odds. The second thing is yeah. that with Elon coming into it, that now creates a magnet effect. And now you have the average every man stockholder of Disney that I think could that could help galvanize. That is exactly the kind of, see, because everyday guys like, I shouldn't say like me, because I already knew who Nelson Peltz was. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I'm just saying someone who owns like, you know, 50 shares, 100 shares, guys like me, you know, or 200 shares or whatever share, whatever that, you know, the, the people that own like blocks of shares, they don't necessarily know who Nelson Peltz is, but you know who they do know? They do know who Elon is. And if exactly. Elon lines up with Net, with Peltz, that one, two, that, you know, that $3 billion of stock that Nelson currently has is mm -hmm. going to feel like 12 to $25 billion worth of thump stock. Like it's right. going to feel like, what was that? It's going to be like a thermonuclear. It's going to feel like Thor's hammer, you know, to use a Marvel analogy. It's going to feel like, you know, woo -woo 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 -woo. and now Bob Iger is looking out at the sun, at, looking out over the open prairie, and he's going to see Nielsen and Elon Thor hammer woo -woo 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 -woo, coming right at his forehead. Well, let me let me give you another thought too. But before I do that, uh, we we have to break in and immediately grab this one. Is it live with a two hundred and fifty dollars super chat with wow. fifty valiant renegade channel memberships? 
Really? Thank you very much. Is it live? We appreciate you. That is outstanding, sir. Thank you. And I, I wanted to say thank you to you. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And to, yes, indeed. And to is it live and as well as the other people that gifted memberships, you've gotten about 70 or 80 so far, including the ones when you were gone. Valiant will be doing a member stream. Uh, we couldn't do it this week because of you know scheduling, but it will be happening. So everybody that you that got a gifted membership, be on the lookout for your uh, notifications. Make sure that your notifications are ready to rock and uh, join Valiant for you. He does great, 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 super entertaining member streams. Yeah, we try to have fun. So I, I'm trying to mix it up to where we've got one for all the members, and then we do a second one. Uh, a lot of times I try to do it right behind it, where we'll go to just the Renegade and Rebel level members, and then the, the Renegade level members get to get on the show with me, and, and we get on a panel and we talk and we ask questions, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but thank you very much. Is this live gifting 50? Once again, 50 Valiant Renegade channel memberships. Thank you so very much. All right, so my thought process is this. What I'm waiting to see um, is this is where Elon Musk can really, if he wants to, if he wants to be the jerk, and I hope he's the jerk. I really want to be the jerk. Um, he can, and I hate to use this phrase, and I want to make this very clear. We're not telling anybody to do this. This is not financial advice. I'm suggesting that this is something that Elon Musk, I think, is definitely inside of his wheelhouse to where he could have fun with turning Disney into a meme stock. And he can do that. He can do that on Twitter with a hashtag. The Walt Doge Company. Uh huh. And I mean, like, think think of what these Reddit kids did with AMC and uh, some of these other ones a couple of years ago. Uh, I Elon Musk. Now, not in the same sense of driving the price through the ceiling, but I mean, Elon Musk could meme this sucker and essentially say. Hey, you know, hashtag buy a share of Disney or something like that. I mean, not exactly that, but you get my point. And all of a sudden you see this on Twitter. And, and if, if suddenly collectively millions of shares of Disney get picked up by people that are following Elon and Elon's like, Hey, when you get your card from Nelson, make sure you send it back. But, you know, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to do this, but imagine if he does. I mean, he could he could turn this thing upside down real quick. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.